The White House is furious at special counsel Robert Hewer for leaking Biden's mental condition to the public. It was a story they've tried to cover up for three years now. Republicans are now kicking themselves as they realize they are stuck with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell for three more years. Donald Trump is shown by the Supreme Court to have not committed insurrection and how ridiculous it was for Colorado to try to remove him. My favorite question from one of the justices was, who is Colorado to tell other states and voters who to vote for? Boom. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. I hope everybody's having a great day today. Hi, everybody. All right. There's a big news update today that I want to share with you guys. So I'm going live. Don't miss out on today's earlier interview with former CIA Larry Johnson, where we go deep onto what's going on with President Biden, how he has made the entire world more dangerous and what's going on in the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, that I'll make sure to link that at the end of this broadcast. Yesterday, Special Counsel Robert Hewer released a report detailing that he had decided not to charge Joe Biden for willfully possessing classified documents because of his poor memory. In one instance, Hewer detailed that Biden couldn't remember when his son, Beau Biden, died. In his own defense, Biden stated, there's uh, even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, wasn't any of their damn business. So he's uh, Biden is trying to say, it's not that I have a bad memory. I just didn't want to talk about it. And so I pretended to have a bad memory. But really, he most likely forgot because in several uh, interviews, he has said that his son died while serving in the military over in Iraq. So this is now the White House scrambling to cover up for the fact that Joe Biden has dementia and most of the world is watching. This is really, really scary, everybody. Now, if we ignore this one instance, the report still details that Biden's memory has significant limitations when other questions were asked. For example, Biden apparently forgot that he served as vice president in 2009, despite being elected in 2009, and also struggled to recall his instance on the Afghanistan debate that was once so important to him. With these heavily concerning details, how could the Biden campaign come back from such a damning report? Well, we have an answer. According to Biden's White House lawyers, the interview actually did well, considering the circumstance President Biden was facing at the time. Their main defense point was that the interview began the day after October 7th, which Biden was busy. Now, I sympathize with how difficult it is to be president of the United States. I would never do it. I don't even know if I would be any good at it. But you can't use this as an excuse for not remembering very, very basic details. Now, here's where the Democrats are really stuck. There's a lot of talk going on in Washington, D.C. about using the 25th Amendment to have Vice President Kamala Harris or the Supreme Court or the Attorney General Merrick Garland officially declare that Joe Biden needs to be removed under the 25th Amendment. Now, nobody wants to do it, but our enemies all around the world are watching uh, the financial markets are watching, bond markets, treasury markets, oil markets, they're all watching and they all look for strength from a sitting American president. They're not seeing that strength right now. They're seeing weakness. The problem is many Democrats are openly saying, if we call for him to be removed, then Kamala Harris immediately becomes president of the United States of America. She would be sworn in and be the first female president. That would be great, right? We're, we're most likely ready for a woman to lead the country. The problem is her, uh, her approval rating is only at 28%. Now, Biden's is at 33%, which is the lowest an American president has been since World War II. I mean, even after 9-11, it wasn't this low. 
even when everyone thought that Donald Trump was in bed with Russia as an embedded a spy to get American secrets, his approval rating was not this low. So you have someone who's incredibly low and their vice president is even lower, five points lower. And so they're, they're freaking out. They're saying, wait a minute, we need Michelle Obama on board. We need Gavin Newsom. I mean, heaven forbid they look at Dean Phillips, who's already running for president and is a pretty decent human being. But no, they, they can't have him. They've got to have somebody who will carry forward the ultra progressive Democrat uh, ideology. And so far, they don't have somebody like that. Now, what's going to happen? Trump is going to go way up in the polls because they are seeing that Biden is a frail man with a poor memory. Okay, now what does uh, a professional think of this report? Well, it turns out that former White House doctor, Ronnie Jackson, who was Barack Obama's doctor, uh, is not convinced. During an interview with Breitbart News, Dr. Jackson stated, he's our commander in chief, our head of state, and you know, if he can't stand trial because of his cognitive issues, it goes without saying that he can't be president of the United States. Now, let me know in the comments, do you think that Dr. Jackson has a point? If somebody's not mentally capable of testifying on their own behalf, are they capable of running the most powerful country in the world, the most powerful military in the world? 330 million Americans. Let me know. I want to hear from you. Do you agree with Ronnie Jackson that he should have a dementia test and that the public should know? Or do you disagree? I want to hear from you guys. Let me know. Agree or disagree? Light it up. I want to see it. While Biden faces major setbacks in his campaign from this, this damning report, the Supreme Court is now expected to give former President Donald Trump a huge boost in the news and also in the polls. And it's not because he's Donald Trump or because he's a Republican or the Supreme Court bench is mostly uh, mostly conservative judges. Oh my gosh, you guys are saying agree, 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 agree. Well, I agree with your agreeing. <laughs> now, uh, it's because... During the Supreme Court hearings in the Colorado disqualification case, many issues were raised. Oh, you guys, some of the questions that came from these justices shows just how brilliant they are. For example, even though the 14th Amendment may disqualify insurrectionists from holding office, the presidency is not explicitly named as an officer. Even if it was, Donald Trump has never been convicted of being an insurrectionist. So subjectively claiming he is one may be a violation of his rights of due process. Now, the hurdles that Colorado's legal team would need to overcome in such a short time are just too big for me to be convinced that he has any chance uh, of hurting Donald Trump. Uh, but you guys, the, some of the questions were so brilliant. One of the questions was, who is Colorado to tell the other 49 states and the American voter who they can and cannot vote for? So basically, they said that this is an embarrassment to the Supreme Court of Colorado, that uh, these anti-Trump, 100% Democrat bench Supreme Court justices were most likely biased in their opinion against Donald Trump. Well, this means that the state of Maine goodbye, you're also not going to be able to remove Donald Trump. And these other states that have pending lawsuits, those are all going to fall away as well. Okay, back over in Congress, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is defending himself against all of the criticism over his support for Democrat-leaning border bills. Now, listen, I am all for bipartisan working together, handshakes across the aisle, but when you basically sell out your country and go with the most progressive Democrats in, the, in Congress, something's wrong. Now, in response to Republican lawmakers calling for him to step down, 
Mitch McConnell fired back, stating they had their shot, referring to when he won the position back in 2022. So unless he retires sooner, Mitch McConnell will hold his current position until 2027, but has declined to comment on if he plans to run for re-election after this term. He can't, you guys. I mean, he can barely he can barely talk. He's super old. Like it's really bad. He had a couple of major like looks like mini strokes on national TV. It's time for Mitch McConnell to go. But you guys, this is just my opinion. Let me know in the comments. Should Mitch McConnell go? If if so, write go. And if not, I want you to write stay that he should stay. Let me know what you think. All right, now Tucker Carlson has finally posted his interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin, which was two hours long. During the first 30 minutes of the interview, Vladimir Putin explained the history behind why he believed he had the right to take Ukraine. In basic terms, he felt that the people of specific parts of Ukraine were still Russian. Now, I found it interesting how he referred to the Dumbass War which started in 2014 as a civil war of sorts. According to Putin, the reason for him to attack Ukraine in 2022 was a decision made for a multitude of reasons, which included pressure he felt from NATO. One of the most shocking parts was the revelation that the war could have ended 18 months ago if it wasn't for the West pressuring UK Ukraine to keep fighting. Now, I've covered this extensively, Joe Biden tasked Boris Johnson of the United Kingdom with going over to Ukraine and basically threatening Zelensky, saying, you better keep this war going or else we'll never support Ukraine and you'll never be allowed into NATO. Now, Putin and Russia had already signed the peace agreements, but this all fell apart because of Joe Biden and because of Boris Johnson. Now, later in the interview, Russian President Vladimir Putin blamed America for carrying out an attack on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. He accused America of controlling Ukraine as if it was a puppet and claimed that the United States isn't really run by the president, but by other forces at work. So you're telling me that Vladimir Putin believes there's a deep state that really runs the United States and it's not Joe Biden? Crazy, right? All right, now, multiple times to Tucker Carlson, it was claimed by Putin that he was ready to end the war in Ukraine and is just waiting for America to allow Ukraine to come to the negotiation table. When asked why he thought America was unwilling to negotiate, he simply explained that America doesn't want to seem weak since they urged Ukraine not to negotiate originally. All right, now, over in Gaza... Hamas has continued to reject the notion of Biden's proposed two-state solution. According to a top Hamas representative in Lebanon, whoever counts on the existence of Israel will lose. Look, Israel already made it clear that they will not listen to Biden, but neither is Hamas, and they will continue to attempt to destroy Israel. Even if Israel did agree to Biden's terms, Hamas would still be threatening to destroy Israel. Just yesterday, Biden criticized Israel for their over-the-top response. It's very clear that Biden is trying to appease both sides, but it's not going to work. On the one hand, I think Israel should stop killing innocent people. On the other hand, Hamas has said that any outcome that doesn't involve the lack of Israel existing is not something that they are willing to continue with. Now, this is my update for today. I hate to run, but I've got my family here that I've got to take care of. But I did want to come on and tell you guys that I love you. Thank you so much for being amazing and supporting the channel. Please give this video a like and make sure to check out this video Ooh, over here. This video right here with my interview with Larry Johnson on what's going on with Biden's mental health, the security of the globe, and specifically the security of the United States and the Texas southern border. Hey, thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next video.